Hi guys, so we're back today um, for our second lesson. Now I hope you all enjoyed the first lesson which was coiling a little pot and it's great to see some imagination come out there, people have changed a little bit, somebody made like a snake and somebody um, put a handle on it, you know this is all great and by all means anything you make feel free to put your own touch on. Um, so today we're going to have um, a mould session, okay? Now, there are different types of mould. You get a uh, hump mould, uh, which is this one. As you can see, it's the one that we've got in our packets. And you've also got a slump mould, which actually works the other way around. Um, so it's, um, it goes inside, so we press our clay inside. Now with this one, we press our clay on the outside and we form the shape upside down. So, um, the things we're going to need for this session is our clay, obviously, which is here to one side. Our mould, so everybody get ready with their mould. And the only other thing we're going to need is a wooden tool, okay? And obviously, some st string or a knife, whichever you used the last time, uh, for your other project to cut the clay with. Okay, guys. So, um, let's start. So, first thing first, I'm going to cut the clay. So, I'm going to get a little bit of string again. Okay, just pop that off and I'm just going to put my clay so you guys can see it or can see a little bit of it anyway and this time I'm going to cut exactly the same as last time I'm going to cut another quarter off okay so for you guys that already know that for the guys that um can't remember what a quarter was for the younger ones ask your parents to help you um but basically it's just another chunk off your slice off of your um, lump of clay and basically we have now used half of our clay so that so whatever we have left is now half because two quarters make off okay so um i'm gonna put my string away first of all and with this project we're just going to use our hands quite a lot so we don't really need many tools we don't need glue or anything like that so this is quite fun this is my favorite one okay so you're going to just get your clay okay and you're just going to take little lumps off okay and we're going to make all sorts of shapes with this one, okay, with all these little lumps. So, example, we can coil, make some coils again. So, we're just going to do that. I'll tell you what, I'm going to move my camera, guys, so you can see a little bit what, what I'm doing here. Okay. And I'm just going to roll out some coils again. Now, this time, I want my coils to be really thin, okay, because this is going to be for um, mostly kind of like decorative reasons. We're not actually... We're building with them, but we want them to be kind of small and neat, okay? So you will understand when I when we start making the video, well, when we start making the um the actual piece, okay? So I'm going to start with a really thin coil. I'm going to split it in half because I don't need very long ones, okay? And I'm going to roll it into a spiral, okay? So do you guys know what a spiral is? Yeah. So we're just going to roll it like that, okay, and we're going to make a little spiral out of it. And then I'm going to pop this spiral, okay, onto my mould and I'm going to flatten it a little bit gently, okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make another one. So with my other half of coil, it could be a different size, it could be a different length. Um, so you have no rules on this one, okay, you can basically just do anything you want. And as, um, as I make the, the piece, you will see that I don't just use spirals. I could do any shape I want. So again, feel super free to use your creativity and imagination. Okay, guys, anything you want to do. So I'm going to get this other little spiral, okay? And I'm going to put that right next to the other one. Now, if you can see, okay, guys, I'm putting them very close enough to be able to join them afterwards, okay? So I'm trying not to leave any gaps in between my clay, right? So the next thing I'm gonna do, example, is I'm gonna get a tiny, tiny little piece of clay, okay? I'm gonna make a little ball out of it just by rolling it in my hands. I'm gonna stick that just there, okay? So can you see that, yeah? And that, these are really good little gap fillers, okay? Because the important thing is we don't want any gaps, okay? So I'm just gonna continue so you can watch me for a little bit, okay? So I'm gonna make another few little balls because I think they go really nice when you kind of put them together. And I'm going to put, do all sorts of like sizes. Okay, so the other thing I'm going to do as well, I'm going to make some really small coils. 
so I'm going to roll them in my hand, okay, or I can roll them on the table, whichever's easier, and I'm going to just put them, put that one around the little balls I made of clay, look, so if you can see, I'm just creating a pattern, okay, now the good thing about this pattern is that you can do anything, so example, I could get a coil and I could put it on like that. And I might want to get another one, a short one this time, and put it on there. Now the important thing is though, always remember, so example here, can you see how this one's a little bit thinner here because it's, it's a little smaller than that one? Always try to keep your clay at the same height throughout your, throughout your, um, your ball making. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just with my hands, I'm going to take off the ends because they're a little bit too thin and I'm just going to put the thicker parts next to it, okay? So now you can see that height is the same as that height, more or less, okay? doesn't have to be perfect, you know, but it, you don't want anything that's kind of too thin, otherwise it'll be a bit difficult to blend later on, okay? So I'm going to continue with that and maybe this time I could make a triangle out of coils, okay? So I'm going to get my coil ready and oh, I'm making a bit of a mess of this coil okay I hope you guys find it okay making coils by the way was it fun does anybody find it difficult you'll have to let me know okay so I've got another long coil here but this time I'm going to use that and I'm going to make it well I don't think I'm very good at this actually so I'm going to make it into a triangle now you guys are probably going to be better at this than me. So I should have really started from the centre, actually. So let's start from the centre. Okay. So I'm going to squish it a bit in my fingers. Okay. In fact, what the best way to do is probably just to coil it all the way around. Okay, guys. And then I'm going to tap it. I'm going to tap it. Okay. And then I'm going to tap it on the other side. So we've got three sides, like a triangle. Okay. So once I've got that, I'm going to put that down next to my other pieces of clay and see the pattern is starting to form, okay? So I'm going to carry on with this and you can watch me while I'm doing it and if you're doing it at the same time as me, uh, then have fun guys, okay? You might find that um, you might make a piece and it's a little bit like a jigsaw. You don't exactly know where you're going to put it yet. Okay, so that's why it's good to try and see where it kind of fits really well. Uh, so I've already done that with a few of my pieces. I've just thought, oh, that didn't go so well there or didn't like it there. And sometimes, just like now, I made something and it was a little bit too long. So I just took it off with my fingers and just made it a little bit shorter. Okay, so just have a little play around, okay? my base okay so pretty much anyway I've done all around the base of my of my um, little ball now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way around all around the sides okay so I would probably if I was you I would try to go as far down as possible okay because the further you go down then the deeper your ball becomes okay so you're going to carry on with the same technique I mean you might want to just do coils all the way around example or you might want to finish off with doing like maybe just lots of little balls put together or you might want to have more spirals all the way around instead maybe you could create all the spirals and then you could just fill it in all with little balls I think that's what I'm gonna do actually okay so um 
I'm going to carry on with that for a little bit. I'm going to keep on doing my spirals. But you need to leave a bit of space at the bottom, okay? Because we're going to finish our ball off with one big coil that goes all the way around. And this helps us to have a really right, nice rim around our ball, okay? So continue with the sides, do whatever you like, and, uh, and we'll see you in a bit again, okay? <laughs> So guys, I'm coming to the end of mine. Um, I've got another couple of little um, uh, spirals to do. Um, however, I haven't got much space, so I think I'm going to make two smaller spirals, okay? So it doesn't really matter about the size or anything. And also I've got this little bit coming down here, so I think I might just fill up these spaces with some little balls. Um, yeah, so hope you guys are getting on okay with yours. Um, and I don't know about you, but I'm having lots of fun here. I find it very relaxing. It's quite nice, isn't it? Just to play with clay and make spirals and different shapes. So, I'm going to put my last little two on here. Okay. And then, while I'm doing this, I'm going to tell you something. So, now this, these ways of making balls is actually really quite nice, actually. Um, and what happens is when I when I come to glaze them, okay, we are going to be using something called oxide. Now an oxide is a material and you get it in powder form. And these come from metals, so uh, often, and obviously some other things as well, some stones sometimes. And in this case, we're probably gonna choose between three different ones. And one of them is a copper, okay, which comes out green. The other one is a cobalt that comes out blue. And then we have a manganese, which is also really nice, and but that comes out brown, okay? And they're all quite metallic, so they all have a bit of a metallic finish. Now, when, when I put the glaze on, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put these metal, because they are in, in powder form, but then we mix them with water. And so they become a bit like, um, just like a stained water really, not so much like a pin because they're still very liquidy. But what we're going to do, oh my spiral's a little bit too big, so I think I'm going to make that a bit smaller. Okay, so I'm going to stick that in there, push it together, there you go. And now I'm just going to fill in all of my holes around, okay, making sure it's all really nice and tight. I don't want to press too hard though at the moment. So, and then I'm just going to make some other little balls just to fill in. All the areas where I can see gaps, okay? Make sure you fill it in. It's really, really important, okay? Fill in all the little gaps, even if it's like tiny, tiny little bits of clay, okay? Just make tiny little balls, put them in there, and then everything will be lovely jubbly. So, anyway, about these oxides. So, yes, yeah, so they come in this water sort of form, and I'm going to put the oxide on the other side obviously not on the bottom because we still don't know what we're going to do with the bottom and i'm just going to paint it on really quickly and what happens is that all this liquid goes into all of our little grooves okay all the grooves that we've got and then i sponge it all off okay so then we have all of these dark bits that stay in the grooves okay and then all the other bits are actually quite light because you can still see the clay so when we then put the glaze on and they get fired in the kiln for the second time, they, um, they end up really, really lovely and you can see all your patterns really well. So be really careful when you make your patterns, okay? You want them to be really, really good and really precise, okay? Because then you'll be able to see them really well. So I'm going to finish off this, guys. And then I'm going to show you how to do your little coil. So if there's little areas like this, that you're not too sure whether you need to fill or not it's always best to just to put a little bit in there it doesn't matter if it stays raised because we're actually going to cover all of this soon okay and we are just going to um so that's so that's why it doesn't really matter if it's all raised because we're going to blend it all in together actually now the thing is if we don't blend it there is a chance that it's all going to fall apart now it might not seem like it at the moment 
because see all of this is all wet now and so it feels like it sticks together but see when it dries it doesn't stick anymore and that's when it all falls apart so even if we really really like the look of it now unfortunately we can't keep it that way so when we are finished filling in all our little bits we'll show you what we're going to do okay guys so i think i've filled in most of my little holes if there's any left over later i can always fill them in again once i start blending so what do you guys think do you like it well i'm really pleased with it anyway so now we're going to do the big coil that goes all the way around the bottom okay i mean if you wanted to you could even leave an edge like this let's say example you might want to have all of your spirals um showing on your edge of your bowl so if you imagine if you turn that upside down now that's what your bowl would look like it would have all of these round edges on okay but obviously remember we have to blend the outside otherwise it wouldn't work so you wouldn't be able to see these ones very well okay so i have decided that i'm going to still put a rim on mine okay because i want it to be a deeper bowl so maybe i could even have my breakfast from it or i could put some fruit in it some grapes or maybe i could put some snacks like cut apple and raisins something like that some vegetables if you like carrot sticks with a bit of dip that might be quite nice as well so obviously all of these things that we make you can actually use them they're perfectly safe for food and they can go in the microwaves and they can also go in dishwashers okay so your parents might be happy about that as well okay and if you want to cook in them you can even put them in the oven and you can even cook in them which is pretty impressive isn't it now do you know the interesting thing about all of this is that clay has to be fired really really high okay now most of our ovens go to around about 200 degrees okay some of you might know what that means some of you might not just not too young but if you think about it right that's 200 degrees and that's really really hot but our kilns so the ovens that we do our ceramic in they go up to 1300 degrees so your little bowl okay it might seem really fragile and now but it gets put in an oven and it gets fired up to 1300 degrees which is massive isn't it it is it's really really hot and do you know how long they stay in the kiln they stay in the kiln for about two whole days okay before we can take them back out so they have two journeys in the kiln. They have one journey, which is a first firing, which is just to, it's called a bisque firing. And that is just to, um, to just make it a little bit harder so we can actually work with it. So it doesn't fall apart anymore. And, but then the next firing is when we put the colours and the glazes on. Uh, and that is a nice one. That is when, um, that's when it gets fired really, really high. So all in all, your little balls and pots and whatever else you make is going to probably stay a grand total of four days in the oven, which is a really long time, isn't it, guys? Mm -hmm. It's a very, very long time. Okay, so now I've made some coils, right? And I'm going to put these around the bits, okay? Can you see? I'm just putting them like that okay well this is the first one anyway and i'm going to continue and put another one so you don't have to do it all in one go you can if you want you can have one big coil instead of lots of little ones but i prefer to do it um as smaller coils because it's a little bit easier to manage really now i'm going to press this down a little bit so it sticks a bit to my plus and to my clear but i don't want it to press it down too much because i don't want to make it thin guys okay okay so now i'm a little bit following the shape of my spirals so it is going to be a little bit wobbly but that's okay because i like that if you don't want it wobbly then all what you have to do is try and keep your clay maybe a little bit bigger maybe make a bigger coil like a thicker coil oh, sorry you can't even see that so maybe if you want to you can make like a thicker coil okay and have it kind of just overlapping the um, the mold and then maybe you could cut it when it's a little bit 
um, when it's a little bit more steady. So remember when we were talking about it being leather hard, maybe you could do that, okay? So when it's leather hard, you could cut, chop it down a little bit. But you might have to find something to lie that on. So example, I've got a cup, okay? I could put that on a cup, right? So I can work with it easier as well, actually. And maybe I can make my coil that little bit thicker. And then when it's a bit drier, I could get a knife and I could cut around the edge of that, okay? And that would give you a really nice, almost perfect finish line. Obviously, that depends on my moulds if they're made well enough or not. But I think you've got a better mould than me. So I've got some spaces left over, okay, guys? I'm just going to fill them in, okay? And then I'll get back to you. Okay, see you in a bit. So now that I've um, finished all of my part, as you can see, I lift that up quite carefully, though I don't want to squish anything too much. Can you see all of my patterns in that? It's pretty cool, isn't it? I actually like all my spirals around the edge of my pot. Okay? Well, my bowl. So, now it's a sad part, okay? We'll have to blend all of this in. Now, remember when I told you about the coils, that we could leave one side of the coil on your little pot still looking like coils but we have to blend the inside well this is the same right we always have to blend one of the sides otherwise it'll fall apart okay sometimes you can get away with it with some pieces if you use your glue but it's a little bit tricky and i think for something like this it wouldn't necessarily work also we want we want to try and get it all completely sealed because then if you do use it for your breakfast and you've got milk then we definitely don't want milk spilling out do we don't think your mummies and daddy would be too happy about that if you had like milk trails all over the house so um now remember um i told you about the card that you could use the last time well this can be used but i think to start with we're going to use a little modeling tool okay remember our wooden modeling tools now if you find it easier to do it with your fingers you can do it with your fingers as well i like to use a modeling tool um so slowly slowly what i'm going to do is i'm going to blend all of these coils and little balls and all sorts of shapes together which seems awfully sad doesn't it but the good thing about this is that on the other side on the inside of our pot we're going to have exactly the same pattern and that's what's going to be lovely when eventually we take this off the mold we're going to see all the in the pattern on the inside so when we um use our modeling tool on clay again i kind of mentioned this a little bit with the with the pots um, but especially for a project like this, we really don't want to press too hard because if we press too hard, we're going to lose all of our pattern on the inside. So what you want to do, instead of pressing down, you want to literally just drag the clay across from each other and you can do it in all different directions, okay? So if you see areas of clay which are a little bit higher than others, all what you do is you just take them little lumps and you sort of blend them down to take the clay in the places where it's most needed. Hope that makes sense, guys. Okay, so the more you blend backwards and forwards and diagonally and all sorts of ways, the stronger your pot will become, or your bowl. I keep on saying pot. I think I still think I'm on my first video. So I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna let you guys get on with yours.
finished my uh, blending and um, my edges are still not incredible well they're a little bit too wobbly maybe more than what I wanted so I'm going to press some of my edges down make it a little bit nicer okay now if you wanted to you could get a knife okay and you could cut these a little bit um, to make it a little bit more precise but I'm going to leave mine because I quite like the wobbliness of the um of the edges but what I am going to do with my finger I'm just going to sort of blend them down a little bit just to make them a little bit softer so it's a little bit easier later on when we finish it off with a sponge so we don't want to have too many bits like that near the edge so we're just going to blend them down a little bit with our fingers and make it nice and smooth okay now we're going to have to leave this guys um to dry out a little bit just like we did with our pots they need to be leather hard so we can work on them a little bit more okay now if we work on them too much now right because it is tempting and we do just want to go with fingers and then get it all smoothed over but if we do that now we're going to risk to lose our pattern on the inside okay because the more we press and the more we work with it the pattern is going to disappear so try and keep it and let it go leather hard before you work on it anymore and that goes for your parents as well okay tell them to keep the hands off okay because i know what parents are like they can be a little bit you know well let's just do that let's just do that let's just do the other so um we're going to leave this now now you can probably leave it for a few hours and you might be able to work on it later if you keep it in a warm place um i'm going to be off to work now so i'm going to leave it till i come back from work now if um this is not quite ready and it's still a bit too soft um, I'm going to wrap it up again and I'm gonna um, finish it off tomorrow morning like we did the last time so let's just see how it is when I come back and uh, and we'll have a look at it then okay and maybe I might be able to take it off the mold okay I hope you've enjoyed this first part guys and um, yeah I'll see you I'll see you later okay bye hi everyone so I'm back after work and unfortunately my day was really busy and long so I actually have left this a little bit too long on my mold I've probably said it's been about six hours so it's gonna be a little bit harder to take off um, so what I want you to remember is when you have done your mold okay because the mold will always keep on um, taking the moisture from your clay only leave it a couple of hours um, if you're leaving it out to dry in a warm place um, and anything after that wrap it in a plastic bag with the mold so that way it won't dry out too much okay so I'm gonna rescue mine though because everything's a little bit too hard now but I'll show you what to do just in case this happens all right so first of all I'm gonna take it off the off the mold so we can see what's happened okay so I'm really really gently I mean obviously guys if yours is a little bit wet it'll come off much easier now the reason actually first before I take it off I'm going to explain to you why it's really difficult to take off now I don't know if you guys know but sh uh, clay actually shrinks when it dries so sometimes we might make a really big piece okay and we think it looks amazing but unfortunately when we put it in the kiln all the water that's in the clay evaporates and the clay actually shrinks a little bit because it loses all that water so sometimes we do get a little bit disappointed when our pieces come back and we think oh gosh that looked really that looked much bigger when i made it but they do look so much better once you put the glaze on anyway so there's always a plus side to it however now i'm going to struggle to take this off because after leaving it for so, so long the clay shrunk so it's kind of a little bit more difficult okay so let's hope this goes all right anyway but try not to do the same as me oh actually it wasn't so bad at all okay so let's have a little look on the inside reveal oh my pattern does anybody like it that looks really good doesn't it guys i really really like my ball yes this is really really good so it doesn't really matter if the outside of my ball is all been blended and I'm gonna finish it off nicely now because the inside looks amazing so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna put this back on okay and just to just to keep it all steady and because mine's a little bit dry I'm gonna just get a sponge okay I'll give you guys a sponge in one of your kits and a little bit of water I've just got a jug of water here now I don't want to put too much water on 
So I'm going to wet my sponge a little bit. Sorry, you can't see that. I'm just going to wet my sponge and I'm going to drain all the water out, okay? And then I'm just going to dab a little bit of water onto there. Now, if my clay was too dry, I probably wouldn't do this. But because my clay still got moisture in, then it's okay to do so, okay? So I'm going to dab that on and I can feel it already getting a little bit softer. And it just means that I can work better with it, okay? Now, because it's nice and hard though now, I don't have to worry too much about my pattern inside. If I'd done it earlier, my pattern would have squished and squashed everywhere, so it wouldn't have been very good. But now, because it's nice and hard, my pattern will stay like that. So I'm going to use my card again. Remember the store card that I said that you guys might find at home um, for, from your parents or something? Um, I'm going to use this again. If you don't have one of these, you can actually use things like even a ruler might actually work. Um, or if you have like a really blunt knife, that you can you can use that as well. Just thinking if there's anything else. I'm sure you might be able to find something that's a little bit flexible, not too hard that you could sort of bend. Okay. So, and if you can't find that, then actually you don't have to worry too much. And you could actually just use a sponge, okay, and take all the take all the water out, rinse it all out, and then you can go over and over until everything becomes nice and smooth. So you guys don't even have to use a card if you don't want to smooth it. You can actually just smooth it with the sponge. Now, this light's not very good because you can't see, but can you see a little bit how it's much better there? Just with a little sponge over? Okay. Now, in the meantime, though, I'm going to do the card, all right? And then we'll see what it looks like when it's finished, okay? scraped all of this back oh it's lovely and smooth um so i'm not too sure if you noticed that but i was kind of using the card a little bit kind of bendy and that's really good now it might be a little bit trickier for some of you some of you younger ones so if you do find this a little bit hard because obviously the clay is not as soft just get a parent to help you okay i think i'm gonna let parents help out at this stage if they want to okay because i know some of you are really young so you might need a little bit of help there so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my sponge again, wet it a little bit, not too much, and I'm just going to sponge a little bit over just to smooth everything out nicely. And I have to say, I'm actually really excited about this. Mm, I think it turned out really, really nice. So, and I don't know if you noticed also, but all my edges are a little bit wobbly, but actually I really quite like them like that. I don't mind them at all. But remember, you can cut them if you want, okay? Now, what is the most important thing, guys? Do you remember? What's the next thing I'm going to do? I hope you all remember. I'm going to get the pen and we're going to write our names on. Never forget to write your names on, okay? So I'm going to put my signature on again. Okay, because it's nice and hard now. I can do that. And there you go. So if one day I ever become super famous... This could be worth some money again. So there you go. Now I'm going to take it off the mould, right? <gasps> there you go. And this is my bowl. Now I'm going to get the sponge again though. It's still a bit damp. So I'm just going to go over all the edges. Okay, and just finish them off. Because you know one of the most important things in pottery actually? If you finish little things off, like making the edges look smooth... It makes a really, really big difference to your piece, you know. So some people that do pottery 
don't think it's very important to get a sponge and just make everything kind of feel a little bit smoother and nicer to the touch really so it's not like sharp because when clay does um get fired it gets really really sharp as well so it's always good to make sure that all of our edges are really really nice and soft okay guys now this video is almost finished now i've taught you everything you need to know for this project but i just want to confirm again there you go i just want to confirm again you have to remember to fill in all the gaps okay if you don't fill them in it won't work as well and there is a chance of cracks and it might split and we really don't want that because there's a lot of work that's gone into this okay but you know what i really like the idea as well of putting the spirals around the around the edges i think that was really nice i've never done that before so anyway guys i hope you like this and i hope this was a good project for you and um yeah um we look forward to the next one and i'm dying to see all of your pieces okay so i can't wait to see them so when this one's finished as well um, you can leave it out to dry a little bit more but remember when it's leather hard we need to put it inside a plastic bag okay before you bring it back to me you need to leave it in the plastic bag if you don't do that it will dry too much and then it will crack when when it's in the car or when it gets transported anywhere okay so i'm really tired now i'm gonna have a bit of a rest so i hope you've enjoyed it anyway bye guys see ya